So today's topic is going to be about oogenesis, which is creation of the female gamete, the ovum. The ovum is generally, oops, wrong color, it's generally a large non-motile cell, meaning it does not have its own capacity to move like a sperm cell would. Now, so non-motile. It's large in comparison to the sperm cell, of course. Now let's go over here to the creation of the ovum. It starts with an oogonium, change color. It starts with an oogonium that differentiates into the primary oocyte. This primary oocyte, also called an ootid sometimes, undergoes meiosis one to create a polar body and a secondary oocyte. Notice that the cytoplasm is mostly favored to this cell over here, as opposed to the polar body over here. The polar bodies will play very little role in the creation of the ovum. In fact, they're, f they're going to de degenerate and disappear from this entire situation. Now the secondary oocyte here is going, going to undergo meiosis II, but stop midway around metaphase II. And it's only going to continue once it is fertilized by a male gamete. Now if that were to occur, it would continue and create another polar body here, and the ovum, which will differentiate or mature into the cell down here, which is now an embryo. So what does, what does this mature egg cell look like? Well, let me change color. It generally has a vitellin envelope here. Let me just so it has a vitellin envelope here it has a jelly layer on the outside a thick jelly layer on the outside and on the inside it would have a something called the cortical granules they're very grayness in appearance, hence their name. Now these, this, this layer here would be the cortical granules. The purpose of the jelly layer, and as well with most of the things here, is to prevent polyploidy, more, more than one sperm cell, as well with protection, of course, for the jelly layer. The vitellin envelope and the cortical granules are play roles in preventing polyploidy, as I said. Uh, their function is probably going to be covered in a different video, although these two are quite tied together. So this is the basic, basic, let me change color, basic look of the ovum or egg. Now, Inside here, this the the inner the inner layer here would be the plasma membrane, and the yolk would be stored somewhere about here as well as the nucleus and such of the zygote. So let's go check about the yolk. So there are three types of yolk you could have in a species. There's mesolysithal, isolysithal, and the telolysithal. The amount of yolk is actually tied to the development time of the particular organism in the species. Therefore, a longer development time, you can expect there to be more yolk in the egg. Each species has their own sort of uh, yolk pattern. You see, uh, isolysithal eggs, like in sea urchins, would have yolk distributed evenly all around the, the all around the egg here. This is common in mammals and vertebrates of sorts. In telolysithal, we have a large amount of yolk, but it's it's un, it's unevenly distributed in the egg. There's a large amount in one one polar area. This is common in birds, reptiles, and fish. And the mesolysithal egg is it's sort of like the, it's very similar to the telolysithal egg, but a lesser amount of yolk.